Hello everyone, this is Kenneth Bruni from Cambrotech and welcome back to the channel. So in this series of videos, we are learning Python programming. And this is specifically for SNG207 Programming for Engineers at the University of Ghana. Now, in this session, for those who have been following from chapter to chapter, we are in the ninth chapter and we are looking at comparison operators. So everything we are learning over here is based on this particular structure. And the link to the GitHub repo is in my bio. Now please, follow this structure because we are kind of learning and aggregating on the previous knowledge so now let's see what you have over here where we have online one as the python comparison operators are what you have over here this is a equal to remember or as you can see over here this is a double equal to and we have the less than the greater than we have the less than or equal to the greater than or equal to and we have the not equal to so now let's see what we have over here and we have on line two the comparison operators are used to compare two or more values so we are comparing values over here so now let's see let's say we have x and x is equal to 10 we have y y is equal to 5 and finally let's have z and z is equal to 10. now let's see the comparison operator and this is going to be very simple now let's try and print for instance x is equal to is equal to y and what we do over here is a double equal to when we actually want to compare two values remember over the past few times we have used this single equal to and this single equal to another name we use is the assignment operator so all that we are trying to do on line three is we are assigning the value in this case integer 10 into the variable x which is a container and we are doing an assignment of value 5 into the container y and also on line 5 we are doing the assignment of value 10 into the variable z but when we use the double equal to as we are trying to use on line 7 then we are trying to compare the value stored in these containers or these variables good so now the question we should be asking ourselves is when we have this this way as x is equal to so double equal to y is it true or false so clearly what do we see over here we have 10 so we are trying to compare the value of x and y so it's 10 equal to 5 and of course if your guess is as good as mine it's a simple no or false so now when i run this we do get a false over here because indeed x is not equal to y now if i'm to change what i have over here to z the question you should be asking ourselves is x equal to z is 10 equal to 10 in terms of actual values then this will then become a true so when i run this we do see a true printed out over here so this will basically return a boolean true or false there's no in between and this is what we are going to use to compare values now let's see something interesting over here when i do a point zero over here now this what we have over here then becomes a floating point value what we have on z and this is an integer so now let me run this and see we do get a true over here so in terms of value they are true 10 is equal to 10.0 there is no difference between these two values now in other programming languages like javascript there's another comparator we can use to check both the value and the data type but what we have this way in python is you're only comparing values and not necessarily data type because as we have over here this we have looked at in previous videos this we can clearly see that there's an int you can check by typing or printing the data type of x and this we already know that this is a float because we have a point zero over here but when we compare these values it says that this is a true statement because value wise they are the same so let me comment this one out and now come in here where we have the not equal to and the way we go about this is for instance if i say x and i'll say x and i'll now have to use the exclamation to negate this equal to symbol over here so now the question we want to ask a python interpreter is is x not equal to y so is x not equal to y clearly as we can see these values over here it is true so now when i run this yes we have true over here now what if i put in z over here is x not equal to y it is equal to so then this then becomes a false statement 
so we can see that we have false printed out over here now let's see another example so now let me just comment these ones out now at this point you're only looking at or we are only experimenting how we use them and later on we are going to build applications and going to use these ones extensively so now let's see the greater than and once again let's print something like x greater than y and of course as we currently have it here x is indeed greater than y so when i run this we do get a true over here then what about z when i run this we get a false because they are actually the same so x is equal to z and not x greater than z Good. now let's comment this one out and quickly look at the less than comparison operator so now i can do for instance x less than y and the question is is x less than y this is actually a false statement so now when i run this we do get a false over here and let me try doing something like this y less than z let's look at these values over here y is 5 and z as it stands over here is 10.0 or let's just use 10 for the purpose of this argument and definitely this is a true statement because y is less than z and here we get a true over here now let me just comment this out and once again let me cut what i have over here and paste it in here and over here we are looking at the greater than or equal to so over here we are combining the greater than and the equal to and one of these conditions needs to be true for we to see an output of true so now look at what i have over here if i'm to do print and try and evaluate x greater than or equal to and this is how we go about this y so the evaluation is going to ask is x greater than y or is x equal to y if any of them is valid then it will output a true statement over here and clearly we can see that x is greater than y per the values we have over here so now when i run this we do get a true over here now what about z now the first evaluation is is x greater than z no they're actually the same but then if it is equal to then of course yes this or these two values are actually equal to so now when i run this we do get a true statement over here and the same logic applies to when we have the less than or equal to so now let's do a print and over here i'm going to say x less than or equal to y and just pause this video and ask yourself what do you expect look at these values and do the evaluation over here so now when i run this we do expect to see a false statement over here because indeed x which is 10 is not less than y and it is also not equal to y as we have it over here so i'll just comment these ones out and i'll come down here where we have the assignment operator so over the few times we've seen something like x is equal to 7 and now we are seeing something like x is equal to is equal to let's say y now this is very interesting now what we have over here with a single equal to is what we refer to as the assignment operator so all that we are trying to do is we are trying to assign this value we have over here in which case this an int into this container we also know that there's a variable okay so we are assigning and we use a single equal to now when we use a double equal to we are doing a comparison we are comparing two values and that's what we see over here now in addition to this assignment operator as we have over here we have what we call the augmented assignment operator and augmented basically means you are augmenting it or we are adding something to it and this is how we do this we do a plus to do an augmented addition operator we do a minus to do a subtraction augmented operator and we also do a sub i mean a multiplication to do a multiplication augmented operator so now let's say you have a variable over here as x is equal to five now if i'm to print out x over here this we've done over and over again and you should expect to see a five over here now if i want to add up to this i can do something like x is equal to 
and I'll say x plus 10. Let me do 10, not 20. So all that I'm trying to implement on line 30 is, and this is why Python is dynamic. Other programming languages, you may not have the luxury to do some of these things. So this variable initially was set to five. And now I'm seeing that that's the same variable. I don't want to change the name, but then I now want to have, and this five will now represent the five I have over here plus 10. So when I run this, we do get 15 over here. Good. Now, writing this is very long. Okay, we can use the augmented assignment operator. And all that we need to do is we can just do a plus equal to. So plus equal to. And when I save this and run this, we still get a 15 over here. If I'm to do, let's say, um, a 20, save this and run this, we get a 25 over here. So all that we are trying to do when we use the augmented assignment operator, all that we are trying to do is the first value we stored over here, we just want to add 20 to it, store it in the same value and now print it out. It's as simple as that. So now let's try and see something over here. And these are some of the things you see being implemented in, for instance, a shopping cart. So in a typical shopping cart, let me first of all comment what we have over here. In a typical shopping cart, you have something like a variable, let's say total set to zero. And we'll have something like item price or price of item or whichever way you want to have it. Let's say set to something like 10. And now we can have, let's say, grand total. So grand total is going to be something. But then we can, if you want to actually use the augmented assignment operator, then we can use total, which was initially set to zero. And now I have this plus equal to, and I can have, for instance, item price over here. So now if I print out total, save this, and I'll run this, we do get 10 over here. Now, this is upon the first purchase. So I'm still adding items into my cart. So after adding this, now this will now change to 10. The total now will be reset to 10. And let's say the new price for the item was like, let's say 30. And now when I run this, we do get a 40 over here. So this can be a simple block of code you have running at the background to implement a shopping cart. So I'll just comment this one out. And now let's look at the other examples, which is we using the minus. So for instance, we have X is equal to five. And now we can do something like this. X minus X minus is equal to three. Sorry, X minus is equal to three. And all that we are trying to say is we want to take away three from the initial variable value five we have over here. And now if I'm to print out X, as we have it, we are expecting to see two over here. Now, if I'm to change this to, for instance, a multiplication equal to three, then we are just multiplying the initial value with three. And that's exactly what we see over here as 15. All right, so this is going to be the end of this video. In later videos, we are going to see how we integrate this into building, um, I'll say a little bit complex applications. Now, you can try with your own examples. And of course, I expect you to try with your own examples. Now you find value in this content, kindly subscribe to my channel to help my channel grow. Now, also don't forget to hit on the notification button so that anytime I release a video, you'll be duly notified. Also, share this video with friends and family who find this content very useful. At Cambrotech, we say learn programming. You can do it. Bye-bye and catch you in the next video.